Now this is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're starting to see more and more world governments backpedalling previously announced policies designed to reduce their reliance on fossil fuels. This week, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak became the latest world leader to do so, listing off some pretty feeble excuses as to why the UK is pushing back plans for a ban on new internal combustion engine vehicle sales from 2030 to 2035, claiming that the cost of going low carbon was simply too high for many and promising to never ask low-income families to make the switch, the Prime Minister used plenty of spin to claim his government was the greenest yet. £11 billion sterling of super deduction loopholes for the oil and gas industry for this year alone seems to suggest otherwise. As the big three automakers in Detroit fail to come to an agreement with the Union of Automotive Workers, there's new fears swirling about concerning the future of EV production. While there's plenty of misinformation around, such as former President Donald Trump claiming in an interview last weekend that all EVs coming to market will be made in China, not the US, some EV enthusiasts are claiming that the UAW strike is simply designed to stop EVs being made. But while concerns over job security does have a small part to play in the industrial action, automakers are now suggesting EV production will suffer if the strike continue. At the same time, UAW's boss has hit back at Ford's claim that UAW pay demands would give it higher labour costs than either Tesla or Toyota, noting that Tesla workers are also not being paid enough. If you've been in the EV world for an extended period of time, you might already have known that EVs that live in more temperate climates enjoy better battery health than those in super hot ones. Now there's some official data to back that up, courtesy of EV monitoring company Recurrent. It's been tracking more than 20,500 Teslas in the US through its software service and has just published data showing that 2020 model year Tesla Model Ys based in states with a cooler average temperature tend to have better battery health over time than ones based in hotter states. While the difference is only a deviation of a few percent over the three years the cars have been on the road, 95% health for colder states versus 92% for those in hotter states, it shows pretty clearly that if you want to buy an EV with a healthier battery pack, shop in colder US states. Euro NCAP's sister ratings agency, Green NCAP, has just published its latest round of results and at the top of the list is not one but two Chinese-made EVs. While Euro NCAP tests vehicles based on standardised crash test procedures, Green NCAP rates vehicles based on their efficiency and carbon footprint, both during production and use. Highlighting its cold weather efficiency, Green NCAP praised the BYD Atto 3 for its energy management system and awarded it 97% and 5 stars, while the Aura Funky Cat was praised for its record-breaking grid to battery efficiency of 93.2%, not to mention its overall incredible energy performance. It too was awarded a 97% rating and five stars, far higher than most EVs on sale today. EV sales data for the month of August is starting to roll in, and this week we heard official global sales figures from both Hyundai, which includes Genesis sales, and Kia. 
Both had an exceptionally good August, with Hyundai Genesis racking up 18,000 new battery electric vehicles during the month. Of those, 70% were Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 models, showcasing how popular its eGMP based cars are proving. Meanwhile, sister brand Kia was also celebrating good sales volumes globally for EVs during the month of August. It sold 15,000 EVs. Just as with Hyundai, the majority of those vehicles were eGMP based models, with the EV6 accounting for nearly 7,000 vehicle deliveries and the EV9, which has just gone on sale, racking up over 2,500 sales. A Tesla driver in New Jersey got quite the shock this week after his Tesla caught fire after striking an object on the freeway. As Tom Malogny detailed in his video on the subject over on his State of Charge YouTube channel, the Model 3 driver was told immediately by his car that there was an issue following the collision and he was able to safely bring the car to a stop, contact emergency services and safely exit the car before anything really bad happened happened. And while some people will ask why we are covering this particular story, because gas car fires happen far more frequently, it's worth reminding people that the most vulnerable part of EVs is the battery pack. And while it's rare that debris hits a battery pack just right to cause a problem, it's always worth being mindful of the risks if you hit something on the road. While it slipped on some of its other goals set over the past few decades, Volvo says it's on track to go all electric by 2030 and to become a climate neutral company by 2040, targets that will make it one of the greenest automakers. This week, during Climate Week NYC, the company took the next step towards those goals by confirming the last diesel-powered Volvo models to roll off the production line will do so early next year. This means that thereafter, Volvo will only sell plug-in and gasoline models. Unlike many automakers whose pledges to go electric only affect certain markets, Volvo's pledge is a global one. Given that Volvo viewed its diesel engines as essential to its success in Europe just a few years ago, this transition is an excellent example of an automaker leading. Elon Musk and, by association, Tesla appear to be under a newly enhanced Department of Justice probe over the mysterious Project 42, long rumoured to be a house for Musk in Austin, Texas. While the investigation has been ongoing for a while, and we've covered it on the channel before, the publication of the recent Walter Isaacson biography of Elon Musk appears to corroborate the claims that Musk was looking to build a house near to Giga, Texas, even though Musk himself now denies it. The Wall Street Journal, though, claims this week that the Department of Justice is expanding its probe into the matter, with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York allegedly readying a grand jury to hear evidence for a potential prosecution. It's using newly discovered evidence that a corporation called Peninsula LLC had agreed to reimburse Tesla for expenses related to the mysterious project. Project 42. Watch this space. Volvo wasn't the only automaker in attendance at Climate Week NYC. BMW's Mini brand used the event to give its US debut of the upcoming Mini Countryman Electric. Unveiled earlier this month at IAA Munich, the Mini Countryman Electric will be offered with a choice of two different drivetrain options, a front-wheel drive model with a 150 kilowatt electric motor or an all-wheel drive variant with 230 kilowatts split between both axles. While final pricing and specifications haven't been revealed for the US market yet, although range is expected to be about the 240 mile or 386 kilometer mark, BMW has confirmed that the Mini Countryman Electric will go on sale this time next year as a 2025 model year variant. There's barely a week that goes by when we don't hear of some company or other working to bring next generation electric car batteries to market. This week, we've got news from a company that's different from most of the others out there. It's working to develop biographite for use in battery packs. Enter Kiwi company Carbonscape 
which has just closed an 18 million US dollar investment round as part of its journey to commercialize the production of battery grade graphite produced from wood byproducts from the forestry industry. Switching from biographite from wood byproducts would cut the carbon footprint of the battery industry by 30%, while simultaneously eliminating current geopolitical concerns over graphite mining. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all of the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get clean green energy at home. So follow that link below and start your journey today. As we explained on last week's show, there's a whole host of cool teams around the world setting new records in the world of electric vehicles. And this week, we've got a new one to share. Unlike the teams we told you about last week, which were both university teams, this week's record setters are a Latvian-based race team called Blue Shock Racing. Taking a commercially available electric go-kart, the team carried out some light modifications to give the vehicle the necessary power required to set a new speed record of 101.3 miles per hour or 163 kilometers per hour on a racetrack in Sweden. Given the size of the go-kart, I can fairly confidently assume that it felt a lot faster to race driver Leo Orbrandt, who was the one driving for the record attempt. And finally, when it was announced that charging networks and automakers were going to switch over to the NAX charging standard in North America, I and other commentators worried about legacy cars being supported. At the time, we noted, with any luck, automakers would produce adapters, but we also expressed concern that it was highly unlikely that Chadamo cars like the Nissan Leaf would see any support. This week, our worst fears became reality when Nissan confirmed that it has absolutely no intention to make a Nax to Chadamo adapter for the Leaf. This means that for Leaf drivers in North America, the chances are that they're going to be driving it as a short range around town ride. And that makes me very sad as I've got a fond spot for the Nissan Leaf. Luckily, no such worries in Aotearoa. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it is time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make that switch. And if you do, you'll help the nation wean itself off fossil fuels and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin E.V. Shoebridge on this channel. He's been playing with plenty of stuff. This week, he was out in a cargo bike with a moustache as well. Whatever you enjoy next, though, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.